The sharing formula of funds for constituency projects yesterday threw the Senate into a rowdy session. As Senator Jairigbe, representing Cross River North, alleged that while senior senators got 500 million naira, others got as low as 75 million naira. Now recall that the chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, Senator Abdul Ningi of uh, People's Democratic Party, that's Banchi Central, had alleged that the 2024 budget was padded to a tune of a 3 trillion naira. Now, uh, according to uh, two former senators, and of course, uh, in their immediate reaction to this, described what happened on the floor of the Senate yesterday as embarrassing, while some saying that the matter ought to have been discussed behind closed doors, after which it would have been referred to the Ethics and Privileges Committee to save the Senate at this kind of embarrassment. And of course, uh, joining me on the program to discuss this, I have two amazing gentlemen to shed more light on this. Jide Johnson and uh, Jide Ologun, who are live with me in the studio at this time. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. I mean, interesting it's times you say in Nigeria at the moment. Um, uh, what happened uh, early this week, one would only... I don't think it has happened maybe in the you know, history of this nation, where senators would, uh, what some people have, have, have termed, watch their dirty linens, uh, sort of in public. I'd like to know your immediate reaction. I'd like to start off with you, Judy Johnson. Well, I think that um, it, was, um, it was a fox pass by the national, particularly the Senate yesterday. In the past, this type of session usually goes into an executive session, mm -hmm. whereby they have the camera and the, the public does not have an access to whatever conversation they were having. But yesterday, they allowed the camera to come in and they were transmitting it live and which worked and played to the larger <laughs> interest of the Nigerian, Nigerian populace. And I think this level of transparency is required at all levels of governance. If you have this level of transparency, you'll we'll be able to know a lot of things that are going on within the people that you have elected to represent us, either at the executive or at the legislature. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a welcome development that at least they could throw such light into the matter and all issues was laid bare. Because in the process of ab absorbing themselves, of trying to come out plain, mm -hmm. they were trying to be transparent and the process of transparent is very, very clear. That goes to equity, must go with clean hands and we could see those that have dipped their hand into the cookie jar of the National Treasury. <laughs> so it was very, very interesting. <laughs> Look, let me know your, your, I mean, your immediate reaction before we you know, start uh, picking the issues one after the other. You know, it's quite amazing that we are coming to this point. And um, when you talk about democracy, it's the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But did what happened you know, recently uh, reflect that? I was coming to that. Mm. You know, that is what you call participatory democracy. So if we cannot all be in the chambers of the National Assembly, we should be in touch with the plenaries and what exactly is going on there. So bringing this to the full glare of the camera is quite welcome. And I think on the part of the legislators too, they should begin to know now that there may not be hiding places for them. And I think internally, there are demands for accountability now. And I think that is that is crucial. Even though we are at the point of allegations, but like a wise man rightly said, uh, behind every allegation are issues of concern mm. that must be thoroughly investigated, you know, to come out and come to the point of establishing whether they are really for themselves or for the citizens. Because when you talk about constituency allowance, it's, it's a crucial aspect of touching the citizens, the electorates, with the impact of their being there. You know, and with all these arguments that we are beginning to have from the uh, chambers, then we need to be clear exactly what is going on. Are we now saying there is injustice in how these allocations are distributed or are some senior colleagues taking advantage of some younger colleagues and because constituencies are being represented? by the senators or the House, uh, the House of Representatives, as the case may be. So why are we beginning to have an equal sharing formula within the system? So, and I must also commend the boldness of those who are coming out to complain. You know, and let's see at the end of the day 
whether their complaints are politically motivated or accountability motivated. All right. Uh, I mean, talking about complaint, let's uh, listen to what uh, one of the senators did say in the floor of the House, uh, on the floor of the House uh, just yesterday that, uh, you know, caused a bit of uh, roundness there. Take a listen. We are going to come back on these issues and coming up with issues of the budget and individual uh, issues concerning what came to our various constituencies. If we want to go into those issues, all of us are called people. Some senators here, so-called senior senators, got 500 million each. I am a ranking senator, I didn't get. Did I go to the price? Most of you got. And yes, if we want to go into those issues, excuse me, if we want to go into those issues, yes. So I think that, I think that, I think that Senator Ningi, Senator Ningi, I'm seeing about I mean, if you're very familiar with the political palace, at that point, they will have said, Senator, please off your mic. And I think... Uh, <laughs> but uh, that happened on uh, the floor of the Senate in Nigeria here. And uh, uh, I think let's backtrack a bit. Let's go back to Senator Abdul Ningi, who made the revelation about uh, allegations of budget padding. And we are beginning to see uh, this unfold in many fronts, on many fronts. Uh, uh, I would like to start off with you, Jide Johnson. The difference he highlighted uh, concerning the budget and also the follow-up where he was actually suspended. Before then, he even said he doesn't, is not afraid of being suspended. Probably he was aware that uh, actions like this would result in uh, this kind of uh, punitive measures. I I'd like to know what you think uh, of his revelation and if at all he went about it the right way. I think um, this is my opinion. I think the leadership, the current leadership of the 10th Senate mm. did not involve a large majority of the senators in the padding of the budget. When you talk about padding, it's about the differentials between the proposal that was presented mm -hmm. by the executive and what the legislature added to it as a result of the, the power conferred on them by the Constitution to be the body that has the power over the purse. Mm. So um, um, in, the, in the conversation, and then if you look at the composition of the 10th Senate, 80% um, of the senators presently are just new, new senators. And you, could, you look at even Senator Jaribi, what he said, mm -hmm. which led to a rowdy session. If you mm -hmm. have to, I, I watched the entire session, mm -hmm. which led to a rowdy session because they didn't want us. It was an off-the-mic moment mm -hmm. uh, because you recall that the present Senate president mm -hmm. was the minister of Niger Delta mm -hmm. when the off-the-mic the situation, <laughs> and the, present, the chairman of the House Committee on Niger Delta is presently the minister of Interior in Nigeria. In Nigeria. So it's, yeah. it's, you understand the, <laughs> the dynamics, the recycling of all of these political, mm -hmm. political elements. So for me, what Ningi did you discover that he had some support from the Northern Senator. But I think the approach adopted was making it to be a Northern agenda that, that, rather than what making I it a Nigerian agenda. Mm. You could have gotten a lot of support from other senators because it was very clear that the president presented 27, 3 trillion was added to it by the National Assembly, and the bulk of the money that was added to it Instead of it being evenly distributed among the 109 senators, the bulk of it went to some certain senators. Some got 500 million. Some got more than five. If you, if you check, if you check the revelations we have seen, you see that in the Ministry of Agri, you look at the budgetary provisions. What is the what does Ministry of Agri has to do with buying of deep freezers and the rest of it? So you discover that the bulk of the party went to the constituency mm. allegedly. Of the Senate president at the expense of other other senators. That's why you are seeing the the old, the, drama, of the, the, the old, the old drama of food. If it had been evenly distributed across the 109 senatorial district, I'm not too sure we are going to hear this particular 
this particular rowdy session which you witness. Mm, I, I think I, GD might have something <laughs> to I mean, GD, I, I'd like to also know, particularly from the legal angle, right, um, what does this reflect of the kind of democracy you know, that Nigeria practices? And what does this also tell of the current leadership in the Senate? Many people, you know, have, have, have started calling for uh, the, the head of the Senate president saying that, uh, I mean, this is just one too many scandals in uh, just a short amount of time. And they are beginning to question his leadership, uh, you know, uh, competence in that house. You know, I must commend what is going on. Mm. I think we are beginning to have democracy in the real sense of it. Because the 109 senators and the 260 arrows members are not there for themselves. Ideally, they are there for the people. And accountability is very important. You know, having established the fact that budget pardon is political, it's, a, it's part of what can be done. By but the is it legal? It is. When you talk of pardon, like um, Sajide brilliantly explained, it's like executive, you presented your own. And that's why they invite ministries to come and defend their... But so so if, if it's legal, uh, how does it go through? Does it go through some sort of checks and, and balance to that ensure is that... Why, that is the point I'm mm. making. Mm. That is why they are there. Well, you see, the checks and balances can be on the scale of insincerity or the scale of sincerity. And the scale of sincerity should tilt to the citizenry. Not, you see, these this National Assembly members are well taken care of. There's no doubt about it. So what is the need for the people? And when we are beginning to read, though it's not new, or hear about budget padding not for the purpose of developing the country, but for the purpose of adding to prayer points that uh, the Senate president deployed to the you email think in boxes. In this context, it was adding to, in your words, <laughs> the already you know, we, we exhausted we, prayer points. We prompted, just, we prompted okay. the issue of off your mic. Mm. Again, it's been repeated. The rowdiness was to cover up some serious issues that were coming to the fore. But unfortunately, Nigerians have come to the point that even when the truth is revealed, what can the citizens do? I'm still asking, we are talking about National Assembly now. The same National Assembly claims uh, to be planning to probe the ways and means that took trillions of Naira away during uh, the former President Buhari. The Betsy, Betsy Edu case is still there. Several cases like that. And so for me, I think the, this internal rancor is prompting a new democratic system, particularly within the legislative arm of government. And I saw this coming if you really reviewed the way the last general elections went. You know, like Mr. Jide rightly mentioned, we have 80% new entrants into that system. So, and some of them came through vibrant opposition party, even though the SUB distribution leveled the opposition a divide. So, <laughs> because we expected some of them to reject the SUV and say, no, let's pay attention to it for the people, let's work on the economy and things like that. So whether they like it or not, this may get hotter because obviously there is perceived injustice in the way the legislative arm is being managed. We are talking of legislative arm now. I was reading a report where the, the, the head of NNPC was telling us the number of pipelines that are connected to NNPC pipelines and giving us facts and figures that are amazing. If you know all this, then why are we still going through oil theft in the country? So we are moving towards beginning to re-energize and reinvent our democracy. But that is what democracy is, is all about. Is this healthy for our democracy? It is, because you know, what they have not done is that they have not started throwing chairs like some did in the past. You see, but now when some senators realize that some of us will challenge us, that is either they go and sit down if they have not been robustly communicating on how to manage the mandate assigned to them by Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. 
that says that National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, orderliness, and good governance of Nigeria. That is the time for them. Is it? The fact that an instruction was given to off the mic did not off the, the crisis that, were prompt, that was prompted because we still have the Niger Delta grossly undeveloped. We still have issues in Nigeria. We have poverty in the land. Mm. We have hardship in the land. And so I'm, I'm happy about what is going on. When you talk about investigation, it means some facts must be dug into. And Ningi has come out to state his own. So state your own. And when you talk about, even he has even resigned as the leader of the Northern uh, Bloc oh, of the yes. senators. If anybody is politicizing and that is ethnic, uh, ethnicity driven, I disagree with that. I've asked this question. Are all the old chiefs. He isolated uh, himself from the group, saying that it would rather. Exa those are excuses. Heat. Are all the mm. old chiefs, are they from the same ethnic group? The answer should be no. Mm. You see, so there are a, a group of of personalities entrusted with responsibilities of office oppressing the, the, the nation. So let's get to the root of all this. You but, know, but I, does this, this still brings me back to my question. Does this uh, put a dent uh, on the leadership competence of uh, the Senate under the current uh, leadership of God's will of Abio? I think I've answered that question. You see, we are not even talking about competence now. We are talking about effectiveness. And my approach to that effectiveness is what result is coming to the citizens. All these things are coming out because some feel sidelined. It's not as if they are talking on how to develop the country. Mm. If they are serious about developing the country, by now the National Assembly should have shut down on the epileptic power supply in the country, on investors jetting out of the country, of different kinds of look at the rate of insecurity now kidnappings so kidnappers are now demanding trillions in the federal republic of nigeria so those are serious issues hmm. that i expect to engage their time so talking about efficiency uh, you can be efficient without being effective so, hmm. and the impact should be felt in the development we experience as a people okay i i would like to go to jide johnson still asking the same question as regards uh, the leadership of uh, Godwill Akwabio in the Senate. Um, some senators, obviously, from what we can see and observe, are not pretty much comfortable with this. It's very leadership. clear that that. that so, so uh, I mean, uh, it appears like yes, even though uh, some will tell you it's pretty much healthy for our democracy, but the Senate seems more divided than what it used to be. So, well, what do well, you make of his uh, well, leadership? Well, you look comfort? at the the election June that took place for the election of the principal officers. Mm. You saw from the division that Yari was, the margin between Yari's and who came second in that contest and Akwabio that eventually won. If the executive not put, and the party has not put his muzzle behind Akwabio's uh, nomination, I'm not too sure he'll be the Senate president. And that's why he needs to realize that, look, the Senate president is first among the equal. And I've advocated this, that we need to remove the title president from the leader of the Senate. Probably we should use the Senate leader or whatever, rather than a president, because it gives them that executive thinking. You need to see the disposition, the courage of Akpabu, even in some of the plenaries which we have watched in the past, is the disposition. And don't also forget that it was a former governor coming with the mentality of an executive. The way you run the legislature is different from the way. So he needs the temperament, the interpersonal skill, the human relations skills, to manage different elements within the National Assembly. And if it's not careful, this might be the banana peel. Mm. Unfortunately for Southern Senators, this is the reality of our country. Unfortunately for the Southern Senators, the Northern Senators usually gather together, pull strength together. When we had Senate President from the North, they, were, they didn't fall on any banana peel. But every time you have had Senate President from the South, they're usually the uh, banana peels that they usually fall. This issue that, has, that happened on that party, happened on that different Senate presidency. And it will happen in the 11th Assembly. It will happen in the 12th Assembly. It is the reality of the legislature. And it is not peculiar to Nigerian legislature alone. Even in developed democracy you call United States of America. It's called Enmark. I, as, 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 a, as a member of the Congress, once we are discussing the budget, I'm looking, that's what GD emphasized. It is not about me, it's about my constituents. What are the things that can come to my constituency? 
But the reverse is the case in Nigeria. It is what can come to me. You ask yourself the question, budget pointed it out, that there's no detail. And one of the senators pointed out that there's no detail. We didn't have any document to back up this 3.7 3, 3, 3 trillion that was added to added. the budget. Now, we are beginning to see some information being, being released. What, in what way can 3 trillion 0. 0.7 contribute to the economy when it's meant for purchases of deep freezer and the rest of it? India is purchasing of deep freezer. In what way is it contributing to the economy? So if you look at that trillion that was padded into the appropriation act of 2024, it's about purchases. And you know what is going to be done? What is going to be done is that somebody will claim to purchase those items and those items will not be purchased. It's just making, providing jobs for the boys. If you part in the interest of your constituent, let's say, for example, I'm representing Lagos West Electoral District, and I said, you know what, for this budget, okay, come and cite this company. It will require 500 million to cite this company. Cite it in my constituency. We get people from my constituency to engage in the construction of this. We get local contractors to come to it. And all of the people that are engaging, we contribute to my campaign for, quote unquote. Mm. Invariably, I'm helping the constituents, I'm empowering them as their representative so as to empower me when it's time. That's the way it is done in other climbs. But in our climb, people will make provisions for themselves. All these three point seven trillion. that's what Jaribi said. Listen to what Jaribi said. He said, if we go deeper into this issue, all of us are culpable. All of us are culpable. He said, all of us are culpable. Some of you got 500 million because you are ranking senators. So, so who holds the senators accountable? Who holds the senators? Who holds the senators <laughs> accountable? Well, that's why you have the House of Rep and the Senate, the joint committee mm. of, of, of both will have to approve the budget. And that's why you have the, the, the approval. Those senators that approve that budget, the power is in the number. Holding the senators accountable, each of the senators, the leadership of the Senate is no more than, is it not eight, eight or so? The Senate President, Deputy Senate President, the Minority Leader, Majority Leader, mm -hmm. Chief Whip, and the rest. Mm. Let's say 12. Mm. Of them, 12 of them, remove 12 out of 109. The framers of the Constitution think that to third of, if to third of the members, if, in fact, if the opposition in the National Assembly opposed this appropriation, it won't see the light of the day. That's the checks and balances. And that talks about the quality of people we sent into the legislature. Hmm. Let, let, let me go to you, Jide Ologon. What do you, what do you see happening in the coming weeks or days as a fallout of this? It's quite interesting that what I see coming is that another crisis hmm. will be dropped on the national table. It was Betty Educate. <laughs> now is the National Assembly suspension of Ningi. So I don't know, maybe in two weeks' time, we are talking of a kingpin of oil oil theft arrested and people will start running in that direction without prosecuting anybody without bringing people to justice and now we are debating suspension of um, Ningi. Ningi. <clears throat> in human resources management yes you know there, there had been a preliminary investigation based on the allegations and the essence of suspension is that don't interfere with further investigations all right he himself has resigned and that's not the first time. In year 2000, uh, Joseph Waku, who criticized OBJ, even declared that military rule was better than OBJ's rule, was suspended. You have in Zeribe, who was alleged of corruption, I think about 22 million Naira fraud. He was suspended. That was 2002. And in 2017, the, you recall the Indume uh, matter, who was alleged to be embarrassing Saraki as the mm. Senate president and Dino Milaye. Where is Saraki today? Where is Dino Milaye today? You see? And of course, you now come to 2018, uh, Omoa Gege. So it's been this issue. But the point is, what have you brought to the limelight of developing the country? You see, so uh, asking me what I expect, they will go indoors, maybe what they should have done, stakeholders' engagement, and off the mic finally, and get some you know, reporters to tell us some stories, and another crisis happens. Now you can imagine that we are talking of over 200 
citizens kidnapped and people are asking, did they use private jet or coastal bus or, you know? So there are several issues coming up. Mm. Several issues. So, and, um, and when you talk about uh, who, is, who should be in charge? So I, I, use, I mean, uh, this issue, uh, yes, even though we know that there are several issues, but uh, would you also say uh, it's a distraction? It's not, it, it may not be a distraction, but it's just a symptom of our current reality. And let me say this, I've said it before, it is not he who has little that is poor, but he who is never satisfied. You may be surprised that some senators are poorer than the citizens on the street, you know, searching for food to eat. Because if you look at the approach to national resources, you'll be amazed. Look at the days of um, uh, uh, palliative jobs that was handled by the son then as, as minister. They were fighting over it, you know, let it come to my, 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 you know, so these are issues. So we have not come to the point where it's all about developing the, the nation. And as long as we deal with that aspect of making governance about service, not about the benefits that can accrue to the players, then uh, all this will continue because mm -hmm. Let's assume, like Mr. Benson rightly spelled out, that the distribution of the constituency allowance was equitable. <laughs> you won't be hearing anything. You know, they laugh out, enter their cars and drive home in their SUVs. But now some are beginning to come together after the plenary in the evening. They're, oh boy, ah, that 75 million hit my account too. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy got 500 million. Oh, no, 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 we are not going to allow this. So, Mm. I do not see them, and that is my personal opinion, please. I do not see them fighting for the citizens. You don't I see, see them, them fighting, fighting the for their of the people. personal interest, interest in there. And until that is exchanged for national development interest. So how, well, I mean, let, 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 let's, let's go back to the system itself. And my question is to you, Jide Johnson. How can we ensure that... Um, you know, we run a system on autopilot that allows for accountability once you're a public office holder, irrespective of your party affiliation. Well, we need, we need some, some levels of voters' education. The best form of you to have a presidential system of government is to ensure that the executive and the judi and Is this the, current system of no, government, is, no, it, is, it, is it right for Nigeria? Well, um, considering its complexity, it is not the system that's the problem, it's the people running the system. And um, mm. my pastor used to say something, if you take all Nigerians and those that are really Nigeria, you take them to America, um, in 10 years' time, America will look like Nigeria, Nigeria will look like America. That's the reality, it's the people running the system. It is, um, or you compare Nigeria with Saudi Arabia, with United Arab Emirates, and all of those oil prospecting companies that we share the same natural resources with. And it's, it's the people, it's not, it's not the system. We've tried different types of system. We've tried parliamentary system of government. We've run military system of government with unitary style. We've run presidential system of military government. You know, Babangida called himself uh, uh, president and as a military head of state. So for me, it's not the system. It's the people running the system. And we need a lot of voters' education. Voters' education in the sense that if you actually want this system to run properly, like you pointed out concerning checks and balances, the way you balance it is for the opposition to control the National Assembly and for another party to control the, legis to control the executive. You see, whether you like it or not, if you still go back to the 8th Assembly, you have some semblance of checks and balances. You know when Saraki was, mm -hmm. yeah. was, was the Senate president yes. by default, and mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was in... It was in APC, but it got the, the, the disassembly. Then the, the 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 percentage of PDP, I think it was it was about fifty five to something. So it was very very close margin, and with support of PDP, was able to move over the line. And then you have a Ikuri Madu as the deputy senate president. Once you have that in a presidential system of government, there is a semblance of checks and balances in the system. But a situation whereby you have the party controlling the executive. Is the same part. Look what happened yesterday. The Senate president went to visit the the president after the session. So where is, where is the check and balances? Was there a directive he received from the president yesterday with respect to how to manage the crisis in the national in the national in the national? Assembly? It is even in our own interest for the executive and the 
legislature to be at cross purposes because that's when we know what is really happening. When they are in court in the same coven, you will not know what is what. Is, if that crisis did not happen yesterday, none of us will know quite all right that one. Each of the senate, some of the senators, you know, you know what the time the guy used, he said, so called senior senator. He said, some so called. It tells you the level, the deep seated anger, anger. and resentment mm -hmm. some of the senators have against what has happened. Don't also forget, in December, it was said that the president gave each of the senators of the Federal Republic 200 million palliative to cushion the effect of the hardship on the economy, and 100 million to the House of Representatives. So add what, 200 million to 500 million. So 700 million. Yet, an average Nigerian is living in abject poverty. The cost of living is unbelievable. The standard of living has dropped below zero. It is now at the negative, negative level. So it comes to this conclusion. Do they really care about us? And we need to care about ourselves by looking at the quality of people we are sending into the National Assembly, into the House of Rep. And we must make provisions for time limit. It's important. We must make provisions. For example, look, Akpabi has been in government since 2000, since 1999. Let's look at it. Uh, commissioner. Mm -hmm. to 1999 to 2007, governor, 2007 to 2015, 2015, um, 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 senator elect, 2019 to minister of Niger Delta. Now, just look at some of them have made it, or you talk about the secretary to the federal government. You so are, are you suggesting that a, a public office holders, irrespective of the position, should have a term limit? Yeah, we should have. We should. We should have. But, but there, I mean, that, there, there should be a term limit. Even in the West, some countries that will make reference to uh, their lifetime senators no, who have been there. No, for there is a conversation going on in the United States of America today is about term limit. There is a conversation going on, and one of the things that Donald Trump has proposed is that, by the, if he's elected president, he's going to put before the Congress term limit. There should be time limit. Why, why should somebody spend a quarter of a century in public office? A quarter of a century in public office. You'll be far away from stark reality. Ah, look, when was the last time the Senate president entered a public bus? When was the last time? When, when was the last time he went to a place without police protection or DSS protection? When was the last time? Or you talk about the Secretary of the Federal Government, George Akume. So do about, you think, do you think uh, term limits would help? Uh, it, will, it, will, it will surely help. The reason why you had this, this session okay. was because you have a lot of younger senators in that. In that, 80% of them, they have said it, 80% of them did not get the money. That's why you are hearing this, um, this Ula Balu. Do you, know, do you think term limits is, is, is the way to go? It may be, but you see, when the fabric, the culture of governance mm. is not transformed, Time limits, we have no one. Culture of governance. Yes. The culture of you go in there to enrich yourself, to move to the next level. So they are connected. If it's about service, let's go to the UK. Boris Johnson, you know, subscribe to the wishes of the people. David Cameron's position on Brexit did not fly as prime minister. He resigned as prime minister. Mm -hmm. That is good governance. So it wasn't about what am I going there to gain. So it, I mean, he just felt that, okay, if I'm not populous with the people, what am I doing here? And it wasn't as if he was going to miss anything outside of that office as a citizen. And these are issues that we are dealing with. So if you even say, once you are a governor for four years, you go back home, that governor can steal enough money to set that up That will last him a lifetime. <laughs> and that is why we are discussing the culture of governance, mm. culture of service. What happened in Singapore? You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. What happened in the UAE? Sheikh Zayed, the founding father, prompted a culture of developing the people. You know what he said? That wealth is not money but developing people. And so, And that culture has been nurtured. All right? Look at what is going on. In fact, you look at Rwanda, for example, to build up the tourism uh, business, the tourism economy. Uh, Paul Kagame built in the interest of the locals, where you have 
those animals that attract tourists. So they, they also share in the revenue. But can you say Niger Delta, though that is another discussion entirely because there are some elements, opinion leaders who are terribly corrupt in the system. So until we come back to the template of good governance, which is focused on development, the time limits will just make, in fact, it puts you in, a, in an expedient mode that, okay, I have four years here, if I can clear everything. And permit me to bring in this excuse. We have the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and something, something managed, disaster management. Disaster management. And shockingly, a ministry you expect to have empathy, empathy. diverted billions of naira. I mean, how do you describe that? So even if that person is in office for three months, what would that person have done? And like some of us keep screaming, and I hope someone is listening, all you read about this is that we are probing, we are investigating. No one has been prosecuted, brought to justice. And in reinforcement theory, in industrial psychology, we are just reinforcing crime. Mm. I've said there was a time kidnappers were demanding for two million naira as if that two million can buy them a whole village. Now they are demanding trillions of naira. At the point, they brought down fighter jets. So, so these are issues. So are we reversing the trend of crime against the state? Or are we strengthening the, the, the crime against the state? So those are so... Uh, I mean, talking about uh, the culture of governance and time, uh, time limits, there's also conversation around making public office least attractive. That would take me to... A recent, uh, will I say, public address, the same Senate president, that's got to Lepabio, said at the uh, funeral ceremony of the uh, late uh, CEO of uh, uh, Access, Bank. Bank. Access, that's Herbert Wigwe and, of course, his wife and son, where he was tackling the governor of Portacot, saying, if you feel there's nothing to gain in this struggle, then why are you in it? So uh, my question is, does it have to, I mean, uh, the speaker, deputy speaker, uh, actually did say that if Nigerians knew how much they end uh, as public officers, they won't shout as much as they are shouting now. So my question is this, what do you think uh, is that pulling factor? If at all, they don't earn as much you know, in the books as we think they earn, what is that pulling factor that makes them want to you know, stay in office uh, do whatever it is they need to do, and uh, at the end of the day, we, we, we have the kind of results we, we, we have. We can have a case study scenario which plays into what GD said um, concerning culture. Bring a senator to this studio and let the environment know there's a senator in this studio, and let the senator put your camera out after he leaves the studio and look at what will happen outside of the premises of your, of your studio. Um, what are the demands that people would be expecting? I've shared it with my student one time. I said, if I invite a senator in America, for example, to come and deliver a lecture, what would be the reaction of the student to the senator once he's through with his lecture? And then if I invite a senator in Nigeria to come and deliver a lecture, what would be the reaction? So it's, it's, it's a product of materialistic society. So which you have the embraced. people also the enable people, yeah, we, corruption. Yeah, we, are, we, are, we have enabled it. The system has enabled it. We have enabled it because if you are into, in, if you are in, if you are a senator, mm. if you don't take anything back home, well, well, then for you to even contest the election, do people will people not collect money from you to be delegates and what have you? So it's a systemic thing. It's a cultural thing. Like um, GD, GD, GD pointed pointed out that we need to to have. Well, we say we should make it least attractive. Least attractive in the sense that in what we in what format? There's the political side. There's this. There's the, there's the civil service side. We focus on the political side of, of our governance, neglecting the civil service side. Now, just, we, I've, I've, I've said it, what's the salary of an average permanent secretary, whether at the state level or the federal level? We all have them as friends, people working in civil service. We all have them as friends, we know. And we know their wealth and we know their salary. So the system needs a comprehensive overhaul. Those that actually enabled corruption, for example, enlisting all the money for the Senate president, with, with, for his constituency, who are those that listed it, that prepared 
the spreadsheet of what they can do, deep freezer, uh, this and that, but is who are those? Who are those that will be in charge? It's turning to a particular <laughs> ministry. There is a particular schedule officer that is responsible for that. So if we are, if we really want to solve this problem, the starting point, which mm. I've said, I've said it, and I've said it, the civil service was not designed to serve the interest of the country. Those that put the civil service in place, and I'm saying loud and clear, was designed to service the crown. The civil service was not put in place by Nigeria, it was put in place by the colonial government. And if you see the structure of the civil service that was put in place, it was to generate revenue and repatriate revenue abroad. And it's still the system that we have, that we have, we have, we, we have in place. So if we really want to change the system, and that check on the political as the civil service is going back to the Orosai's Oros um, report. report with respect to what we need to put in place as the bureaucracy that will service the political. If we don't do that, we still have this multiplicity of agencies, agencies of government, and we have politicized the appointment. It is no longer career-based. So the president can wake up and say, you are fired. To denote that there is a rigorous process for appointment and a rigorous process for removal, we still be faced with what we are facing. Okay. I, I mean, J.D. Logan, do you think Nigeria can get it right soon? Why not? You know, in 1965, Singapore left Malaysia as a coastal region with little resources. In fact, Lee Kuan Yew visited Nigeria and some other countries seeking for collaborators in that development journey. But when he evaluated the governance mindset, he decided to go solo. And you can see today what that man did before he died. He translated Singapore to you know, one of the best places to live and to work in the world. So the possibilities are there. I was sharing with a client today. Africa as a continent, you know, plays host to about 40% of the total resources of the world. And so Africa has no business with poverty. So it's a matter of choice. If we choose to prosper, we will. If we choose to remain in poverty, we will. And it's all about those who have been entrusted to manage our resources. You know, we've been seeing videos of bandits that are arrested. You know, as a chief superintendent of police, I can, there's this saying we have, that every crime leaves a footprint. Mm. So even if what is one suspect you can arrest, that suspect can lead you yeah. to a chain of, and here we are, talking about culture. We identified about 400 sponsors of, of terrorism in the land. And today, I'm not sure 10 have been jailed. <laughs> you see. Not if one has been prosecuted. Exactly. So, those are, so Nigeria can develop if the oppressors repent. And if they don't repent, I mean, we, we, we monitored the pockets of protests, hunger activated protests that are going on in the country now. So, if things are not handled properly, in public relations, you talk about perception. The suffering we perceive that these flamboyant leaders are their enemies. And you know what comes out of that. So why don't the leadership sit down rather than all these 500 million constituencies, 75 million, and look at how God has overblessed Nigeria. I read a few days ago that the cost of bitumen has gone up, and Nigeria has the second largest deposit of bitumen in the whole world. You see, this afternoon, I still did a research as an analyst. I think the 12.5 kg of gas cylinder is now about 16,000. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria has <clears throat> the largest deposit of oh, broken gas out. in Africa. Mm. You see, so I told us the pipelines of criminals, thieves, that are connected to the national pipeline. How does Saudi Arabia manage their oil and gas ecosystem? You know, so these are issues. So I think Nigeria remaining in poverty is a function of choice. The moment we choose to embrace prosperity, we know the right thing to do. I mean, it, it, it's so, I was, I was really touched a few days ago, checking the weather 
and the fact that electricity is almost paralyzed in Nigeria. So I mean, that's, wonder that's, what people that, are that's, going through. That, that's a conversation wonder for, what people are going through. for another day. Many offices I mean, the, now, they just open their windows. Yes, so true. you can see the number of investors that have folded up their businesses. And we, are, we look at, you know, so these are issues that should concern government. And we are reading about uh, padding and, and stuff. You need like energy. Even, even you though, need even energy though the, the of course, even uh, the, the, the Minister of Assembly, Power. They has, suffered power outage. Uh, outage. Yes, okay. even though the, the Minister of Power airport. has uh, appealed to Nigerians to exercise some level of patience that uh, this too shall pass mm. very soon. But uh, no, so the question now is how soon. But, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time on the program today. Uh, Jide Johnson, thank it's you. It's a pleasure. And too. also Jide Ologun, thank you for your time too. It's and thank you for bringing Jide and Jide. <laughs> <laughs> God bless <laughs> Nigeria. Well, that's a wrap on today's episode of the program. My name is Dakbo Adigboye. Leadership is about being responsible and taking responsibility. On that note, I say bye for now. <laughs>